Um, I'm going to speak about the typical multi-apical deformities. We, we are going to revise again the apex of the deformity and the cora and that sort of stuff. I want to remind you that uh, the apex of the deformity of the cora is at the level of intersection of the proximal and distal axis. So apparently here, if you just look, we have a cora here. We have an apex of the deformity over there. It looks clear. It's called obvious apex. And I think it's the real apex too. We draw a first line. The first line represents the distal segment. It's exactly in the middle of the shaft. Then the second line represents the other segments. And they are going to meet each other in the obvious cora. And the obvious cora, it's exactly the real cora. What is the level of the cora or the apex of the deformity? The apex of the deformity can be in the joint, inside the joint, like here, it's inside the ankle itself, or in the metaphysis, or in the diaphysis. This is the obvious cora. You can see it looks like an apex of the, the deformity. The cora can be in any plane. We have a coronal plane, it's this plane, you can see the coronal plane in the AP view. This is the AP view showing the coronal plane. This is the sagittal plane, if you see in the lateral view. So if you have a deformity in the coronal plane, the vera survalgus. And if you have a deformity in the lateral X-ray, this is the sagittal plane, recurvatum or pro-recurvatum. And if you have the deformity in the AP and lateral, that means it's in the oblique plane. It's in between the coronal and the sagittal plane. So the cora can be in the coronal plane, the sagittal plane, or the oblique plane. Again, the apex of the deformity of the cora is at the level of intersection of the proximal and the distal axis of the bone. This is the, the apex of the deformity. And if you draw the axis or the transverse bisecting line over the transverse bisecting line. This is the proximal make ac uh, anatomical axis and distal anatomical axis. They meet each other in the middle and we draw the transverse bisector line. Any point over this line is considered a core. So this is, they are all cores. Again, they meet each other in the middle. We draw the transverse bisector line and any point here at the core. If we have uniapical deformity, single osteotomy will be enough to correct the deformity. So this is uniapical deformity, metaphysical deformity, as we see here, and you have the apex of the deformity. This is the axis of the proximal segment, axis of the distal segment, the transverse bisector line, and the chorus lies here. If we do our osteotomy here, this will be enough to correct the deformity, as you see here. We did our osteotomy, the transverse bisector dime, and we did an open or an angulation osteotomy or have a perfect mechanical axis or anatomical axis. But if the core lies outside the bone, we have the proximal axis, the distal axis, they didn't meet in the middle of the bone, they met outside the bone. The second situation, we have an obvious core. You see here, we have an obvious core. It's crystal clear. But if we draw the mechanical axis of the proximal segment and the mechanical axis of the distal segment, they are going to meet here. This is the mechanical axis of the proximal segment. And this is the mechanical axis of the distal segment. They are going to meet here. The core is far away from the apparent core. That means we have another core. It's not only one. We have two cores. And this is a clinical example. This is a case of uh, achondroplasia, long-standing achondroplasia without any treatment before. And you have this severe deformity. If you draw the mechanical axis of the proximal segment and the mechanical axis of this segment, they are going to meet outside the bone. That, mean, that means that you have two cores. 
Again, severe valgus deformity, if tibial deformity. If you draw the mechanical axis of the proximal segment and the mechanical axis of the distal segment, they are going to meet outside the bone. That means we have a multi-apical deformity. So if we, if the proximal axis and the distal axis meet each, meet each other outside the bone, that means you have a multi-apical deformity. We have more than one core. In this example, we have a diaphyseal apex of the deformity. It's clear. Look to the apex of the deformity. It's here in this point. This is apparent core. And this is the apparent apex, apex or the core. So if you draw the mechanical axis or the anatomical axis of the proximal tibia, and the anatomical axis of proximal or the of the distal tibia, they are not going to meet in the apparent apex. They are going to meet away from the apparent apex. That means we have another core. So this is the apparent apex. This is the real core. So the core lies away from the apparent apex. So what's the difference between uniapical deformity and the multiapical deformity? Why you want to differentiate? Because if you have a uniapical deformity, you need one osteotomy. If you have multiapical, you have two osteotomies. If you have a uniapical deformity, you can draw only two lines. In a multiapical deformity, you can have three or more lines. A proximal line and distal line, third or more lines to represent the middle segments of the so if you have uniapical deformity, we have a proximal axis and distal axis. If you have multiapical deformity, you have proximal axis, distal axis, and a third line. And this is an example. This is a uniapical deformity. A line representing the proximal axis and a line representing the distal axis, and they are going to meet each other in the bone. You see here, so this is uniapical. But in this deformity, this is this line representing the proximal axis, another line representing the distal axis, they are going to meet outside the bone. So we draw a third line representing the middle segment of the bone. This middle segment will meet the proximal in the proximal cora and another, the distal axis in the distal core, so we have two cores. If you have more C-shaped deformity or like a semicircle, you can have more than one middle segmental line. So we have a proximal axis, distal axis, this axis represented this segment, another axis representing this segment, and you have three cores. This is multi-abical deformity. If you remove the bone, it's very simple. If you have any apical deformity, why apical deformities? You have two cores. You draw a third line representing the middle segment of the bone. If it is C-shaped or semicircular, perhaps you have more than one axis to represent the two segments of the bone. Again, if you have a uniapical deformity, the proximal axis meets the distal axis in the middle of the bone, and you need one osteotomy to correct the deformity. But if you have C-shaped deformity, again, you draw the, the anatomical axis of the proximal segment and the distal segment, they are going to meet away from the apparent apex. This is the apparent apex, and this is the core, and this is the normal leg of the normal tibia. Again, this is the apparent apex. We draw the anatomical axis of the proximal segment, the distal segment. They are going to meet not in the apparent core, so we have to draw a third line. This third line represents the middle segment. When we draw the middle segment line, it will meet the proximal line 
in the proximal cora and the distal line in the second cora. So we have two coras. We need two osteotomies to correct this C-shaped deformance. And this exercise, you see, again, we have two cores, and we draw the transverse bisector line of the proximal segment, and the transverse bisector line of the distal segment, and now we have open wedge and open wedge, and we can correct the deformity. Again, we have osteotomy, over the transverse bisector line here, another osteotomy over the transverse bisector line here, and we did open wedge and open wedge. We have shortening, and with this open wedge, we've been able to correct the limb length inequality. You see, we have lengthening here, and we have lengthening over there. And you see the mechanical axis. If you calculate your angles, it's going to be normal. And this is the clinical X-ray of the patient, the clinical photo of the patient. In the sagittal plane, you have the same problem. Look to the sagittal plane. We do the same exercise. We draw the mechanical axis of proximal segment and distal segment, and we do two osteotomies and open wedge and open wedge. This is the sagittal plane deformity, and uh, this is the lateral X-ray. We draw the anatomic axis of proximal segment, and the anatomic axis of the distal segment, and the, this is the third line representing the middle segment. We have two osteotomy, we have two cores. From this cora, we did the first osteotomy here and the open wedge, and the second osteotomy there and the open wedge, and you see the mechanical axis or the anatomic axis of the tibia. Again, with the various deformity, axis of the distal segment, another axis of the proximal segment. And we did two osteotomies to correct the axis and lengthening. So with long-standing chondropasia and various deformity, you need two osteotomies because you have deformity of the knee and you have deformity of the ankle. And this is after lengthening and the correction of the deformity. You can use also the guided growth to correct the deformity. Because in such a case, you, need, you have two coras. So we applied guided growth in the, fee, in the upper tibia and guided growth in the lower tibia. Also another clinical example, if you have anterolateral tibial boy, you can treat it as an oblique plane deformity because you can see it in the AP and lateral, and you can ignore the site of the bowing here because of uh, we are afraid of the development of congenital pseudarsos tibia, and we treated it as a deformity, so we have the proximal axis, distal axis, they are going to meet outside the bone. So we draw a third line. So we are going to have two cores, proximal cora and a distal core. So we, do, we did two osteotomies, and from the two osteotomies, we correct the deformity and we do length. In conclusion, you have to differentiate between uniabical and multiabical deformities. If the core lies at the point of obvious deformity in the bone and the joint orientations are normal, the deformity is uniabical. If the core lies outside the point, the point of obvious deformity or either joint orientation is abnormal, Either a second cora exists in that plane and the deformity is multi-abical or a translational deformity also exists in that plane. When the cora lies outside the boundaries of the involved bone, a multi-abical deformity is likely to be present. Again, in conclusion, if the cora is not at the obvious deformity or lies outside the bone, 
Second, the apex of the deformity or another cora or possible translation need to draw the mechanical axis or the anatomical axis of the middle se segment or the third line. You extend it, the middle segment, till it crosses the proximal mechanical axis and the distal mechanical axis.